What makes a planet a planet? Well, officially, it has to orbit the sun, it has to be large enough for gravity to make it round, and it has to have cleared its orbit, meaning it has to gravitationally dominate the orbit it's in. A body that passes the first two conditions, but not the third, is called a dwarf planet. This is a little bit confusing, since dwarf planets are not planets, but rather they're their sort of own distinct class of space rock. In a recent video, we looked at what happens if we relaxed that third criteria, an exercise which allows pretty little Pluto to be classified as a planet once again. Here, let's play some other fun games with the definition of a planet. In the process, we'll find out under what conditions we can start calling moons planets, why exoplanets might not pass the official definition of a planet, but some stars might and even discuss why an anti-Earth couldn't be a planet. There are a few ways that we could criticize the official definition of a planet. For example, it depends on the location of an object. Mars is officially a planet, but if a Mars-sized objects were found in the far reaches of the solar system, like the Kuiper Belt or the Oort Cloud, then it wouldn't have enough mass to clear out the orbit. That would mean it would then fail on criterion three and wouldn't be a planet. If we got rid of that third criteria, then Pluto and potentially hundreds of other objects would become planets. But we talked about that in the previous video, so check out the details there. There are other fun games we can play though, like seeing what would count if we relaxed one of the other criteria instead. This is all hypothetical, of course, but it's quite interesting to think about. For example, let's reimpose the orbit clearing, but drop the criteria for being round and allow funky shaped planets. Effectively, this would remove the size requirement and planets could be smaller and not gravitationally forced into spheres. This sounds like it opens loads of possibilities, but it's actually a tough one to find objects for, since being round is a mass-based thing, but really so is clearing the orbit to a certain extent. We would still include the eight current planets, of course, but what else could we add? It wouldn't help Pluto or any of his friends as we've reimposed the clearing of the orbits. We really need to find objects that can locally dominate but aren't round. They would need to be made of strong rocky materials to keep their non-round shape, comparable to the nearby debris, but not absolutely large. Potential examples could include something like Vesta in the asteroid belt. It passes criteria one, but it isn't round. The issue is it's nearly round. It has an equatorial bulge and a massive impact crater. So partially fails this round requirement. However, it also hasn't really cleared its orbit. It does dominate the local patch of the asteroid belt more than most, but it's certainly not fully cleared it. So this is an edge case here. The same goes for Pallas and Hygieia, other large asteroids. They're mostly round, but they also don't really dominate their orbits enough. So I'm again gonna call them edge cases here. Interestingly, both Pallas and Vesta aren't round, but are larger than some round objects. They were probably round at one point and then experienced big impacts to force them to be not round. So this is at least kind of cool to know. The truth is, we don't really know of anything that fits into this group well. Normally, if you're large enough to have cleared your orbit, you're large enough to be round. We would need to have a large asteroid in an otherwise empty orbit. Then it could technically have cleared its orbit thanks to just being isolated, but still be irregular in shape. Just a note too, that things like comets would still fail this definition too. They often have elongated elliptical orbits that take them far beyond the current planets and often don't have well-defined orbital zones to have cleared. So it's hard to say that they could satisfy the third criteria. If we also dropped that third criteria, clearing the orbit, then simply anything orbiting the sun would be a planet. But I don't think that's a very useful or interesting case. Comets are also not very well stuck together. So it's really hard to think of them as something that's planet-like. Okay, so nothing really got added to the planetary lineup if we dropped condition two, but what if we instead dropped condition one? What if planets have to be round and clear their orbits, but don't have to orbit the sun? Actually, there are a few obvious cases we can think about here. Firstly, we would promote a lot of moons to being planets. Many of the moons of the solar system are round and dominate their orbits, but primarily orbit their planet instead of the sun. In some cases, this makes a lot of sense. 
as it's actually likely that some of the larger moons in the outer solar system could have been dwarf planets that ended up being captured by the larger planets out there. The moons that would be upgraded in this case would include our own moon. It's for sure round, it gravitationally dominates the orbit around the Earth, but it does orbit the Earth instead of the Sun. It would also include Jupiter's Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Again, all round, all in stable, cleared orbits, but orbiting Jupiter instead of the Sun. The same goes for Saturn's moon Titan, the largest, most distant world humans have actually landed a probe on, and also Neptune's moon Triton, which is one of those large moons that could be a captured dwarf planet. We can see many large moons pass the planet criteria 2 and 3, but not number 1. Under this definition, we could have 7 extra planets, giving us 15 in total. Or actually, maybe there's even more. This new definition could also include rogue planets. These are objects that look like planets, but are free-floating in space, not orbiting any star, and certainly not orbiting our sun. Sort of, by definition, there are none in our solar system, but we know of a few in the Milky Way. In reality, these don't technically pass the IAU definition of a planet, but most astronomers do call them planets, assuming they're round and have similar properties to some of the planets in our solar system. I won't add any of these to our count here, but there could be loads of them. An interesting point to argue is whether planets orbiting other stars are actually counted as planets. The official IAU definition only refers to our solar system, and explicitly says that planets have to orbit the Sun. We call planets orbiting other stars exoplanets, and they certainly don't count as planets in our solar system. We do though, kind of unofficially, but everyone does it, just replace the sun in criteria 1 with a star, and this gives us a definition for exoplanets. We know of the existence of literally thousands of exoplanets, worlds that are round, dominate their orbits, but orbit another star instead of the sun. I guess this counts as relaxing criteria 1 from the definition, but it's a bit different. So I'm definitely not counting all exoplanets as new planets under this change. I do though have two more interesting cases for you to consider. Firstly, if we had a binary star system, so two stars orbiting each other, or a small star orbiting a larger star, wouldn't these count as planets? At least under our expanded definition, replacing the sun with any star. They would of course be orbiting a star, they would be basically round, and they would dominate their orbits. It sounds like what we all know to be a star would be counted as a planet in this case, or at least an exoplanet. However, the saving grace is that the IAU definition is only applied to subsolar objects, things not undergoing nuclear fusion. This means that even if a star satisfies the shape and orbit conditions, they are excluded by intent since they're stellar objects, not substellar things. Okay, so that didn't quite work out, but final thought experiment here. Imagine we had an identical planet to the Earth on the same orbit, but exactly half of that orbit away, so it's always on the opposite side of the Sun. Would either, neither, or both the Earth and this anti-Earth pass the definition of a planet? They're both clearly orbiting the Sun, they would both be round, but could we count either as clearing their orbits? I think this is a subtle question. Clearing the orbit doesn't mean that the planet must be the only object in their orbit. It really means that they have to gravitationally dominate their region, something the planets clearly do, but objects like Pluto clearly don't. This is basically how we have anything at all past the definition too, if I'm honest with you. Earth has near-Earth asteroids and Trojans that share similar orbits, but we still count Earth as having cleared its orbit, because it dominates the region, gravitationally speaking. Similarly, Jupiter has Trojan asteroids in the same orbit as it, but it still counts as clearing the orbit too. So, the fictional second Earth, 180 degrees from us, on the same orbit, does it count? Well, in principle, if the two bodies are equal mass, neither of them really dominates the orbital zone, so I don't think under the letter of the IAU definition that either can count as clearing its orbit. This would, I think counterintuitively, mean that neither would be a planet. I mean, you're taking the planet Earth, adding another planet, and ending up with no planets. The thing is, the IAU definition is qualitative. It doesn't have strict mathematical thresholds. So maybe common sense should just prevail here, and we would count them both. Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. I should also add though that the setup I described would be unstable, meaning the perfect distance between them wouldn't last. 
Even if the other planet started perfectly half an orbit away, tiny gravitational tugs from Jupiter or Venus, for example, would ruin the configuration, and they would drift closer together over time, and might even collide or merge eventually. I hope you enjoyed this kind of fun video and thinking about these hypothetical planets. Shoot me any questions or comments or murmurings you might have down below. Check out another video on the channel if you like, especially the one about reinstating Pluto as a planet. And of course, consider subscribing if you're new. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe, T. I'll see you soon. Bye!